Time to put all this back together on the DR650 and talk about the mods. Let's go. DRock here, welcome to the channel. I hope you all are well. Finally got all of my equipment for my DR650. This has been an ongoing process here. Uh, my last video I talked about, um, well, I discovered that I had uh, broken my speedometer cable by uh, inadvertently adding handlebars and one riser, as I do believe that the throttle cable here was over the, um, speedometer cable which is located here and when I turned or something it was pulling on it and it eventually popped it somehow in the middle of a ride when I was testing out <laughs> the new Cherubus 5.3 gas tank that I had installed. All these things affect one another. What affected the handlebars was I have replaced the stock seat with the ProCycle standard seat. It raised it up and everything affected each other and yeah, it's amazing how that all works. One thing, you know, creates this problem and that problem and that problem. Anyway, I think I have it all resolved. So I've got all my gear in. I finally got everything late yesterday. So now we can put all this stuff back together. And this portion of the bike is now ready for the ride, I believe, to Baja. <laughs> I still have probably some more things to do. I don't even know if I'm going to do them. I'm just going to go. So, uh... One thing that's been, I've been waiting on uh, is weather. It's just been continually hot. It's, just, I mean, we're talking triple degree heat. We're now into October and it's still triple degrees out here. It's just like, it will not cool off. And been waiting for that to happen. So um, this is just giving me a project to do while that happens. So another few weeks and then uh, probably take our first ride down to orient myself with border crossing and Mexicali is what I'm shooting for. And uh, go from there. Anyway, today we're going to put the things back together. I'm going to put on the new Bark Busters, speedometer cable, all that stuff. And then I'm going to talk about the mods I have on my DR650. And uh, yeah, that'll be it. So join me. All right, so what you're looking at right there is my broken speedometer cable right in the middle of my ride. <clears throat> I did a 250-mile ride to test out the gas tank to see how the consumption went. Right in the middle of that ride, the speedometer cable sheared. Well, it's almost the latter part of that ride. Um, and what I did is, ProCycle, of course, I went and got uh, a new speedometer cable. I actually got two speedometer cables. So I'll install the first one. And then on the trip, I can take one speedometer cable. And I've also got clutch cable as well, just, just in case. So, uh, yeah, we'll go ahead and get the speedometer cable put in and hopefully we're good to go. So if you're not familiar and you haven't done this on your DR650, the speedometer, of course, is here. You can't miss that. Cable uh, runs right up through the center here. And this just kind of pulls out like that. You see that in there. And my, my light is pretty bad when you can see it and that just goes out. And I'm just going to pull this right on through. It goes, it's got two points that passes through right there and in here to keep it out of the way. I think that's correct. We'll have a look. So one, two, and then it just runs up through there. So it doesn't look too complicated. So this is the new speedometer cable. It's already ready to go out of the packaging. It is uh, from Motion Pro. And you'll see right here, this point, sorry, the camera doesn't focus very well. This section right here fits into this hub. You see right there, that little um, part that that will slide into. And then this of course goes on your front tire. And that's what makes your speedometer go. And then of course this, this part up here uh, attaches to the inside of the speedometer at the top. So it's a pretty simple change really. Okay, I've reinserted the cable into the uh, speedometer, actual speedometer, and then 
I uh, just got this little <clears throat> piece that comes up and screws in. So that's done. And then next we just have to insert this piece into that hub and then uh, attach it to the tire and so on. That part will be done. Go. It just pops right in like that, and then we'll tighten that screw that you see right there where my thumb is, and we should be good to go. Okay, I cleaned up the axle, reinserted the axle through the speedometer uh, grommet to the other side. And we're going to make sure that's nice and tight. There we are. <clears throat> and then, of course, we'll finish off by tightening these here. And hopefully, uh, we get everything done. All right, well, that part is done. Front tire is reassembled and hopefully the speedometer is back to working. So next, um, we're going to get the throttle cable back installed on the sleeve and then we're going to put on the Bark Busters hand guards. That's the Storm version. I'm not going to really film that whole process. If you never use Bark Busters, they're really simple to install. And uh, I had to get new ones because of the new handlebars. They're an inch and an eighth, one one eighth. Uh, stock bars are seven eighths, so yeah, and these are tapered. So uh, once I get that installed, I think I'm done. I'll have to put the cowling back on. Oh, one other thing I'll point out while I have this off is I went ahead and did the clutch bypass. So I no longer have to pull the clutch in to start the motorcycle. I just hit the start button. So. It's really simple to do. All your wiring's right here. You simply just, no, I'll just show you. There are these two yellow wires here. They, uh, you pull them apart and then kind of reconnect them to uh, the opposing one. It's really simple. There's a few videos online about it. However, I just want to do the clutch bypass because it's a simpler thing to do with the bike. It keeps things simple. All I have to do is hit the, the start and no longer have to press the clutch. Although I do remember, I just kind of do the same thing. I make sure the bike's in neutral before I hit that. <laughs> so it's not that complicated. Um, it's just as simple as unplugging two wires and then plugging them in all over again, except not in the same spot, if that makes sense. Okay, remember I did the clutch bypass, so I no longer have to pull the clutch in to start. So we'll just turn it on. I just want to make sure that it is in neutral. And here we are. Very nice. Now let's see if the speedometer works. Speedometer is working. Barkbuster hand guards are installed in weights. Very happy to have those back on. Uh, the installation for the Barkbusters is, is really simple. So I highly recommend Barkbusters. Uh, uh, they're not the uh, only hand guards I've ever used. I've used the Acherbus. Is it X Factor, X Factory? I think it's X Factor hand guards. And I prefer the Barkbusters. They're just a little more expensive, about 150 bucks. But they're fantastic hand guards. And uh, I'm, at this point, I'm just going to go over the mods I've done with the bike thus far. So, and then this is just going to be a short video. So, installation of the Bark Busters, like I said, very simple. I didn't really feel the need to make a video to do that. But I can. It's not a big deal. <clears throat> so, let's just go ahead and start. Uh, I had to make a list because I've done a few things with the, the DR650 at this point, And I've... Uh, the first thing, and I've made videos for some, for most of this, I believe. So, get this cable out the way. Uh, the first thing, well, one of the first things with the DR650, I'm not going to jam the camera in there because I did make a video of this. It's the upper chain roller. Uh, you can remove that. 
And then ProCycle actually has a bolt that'll fit in its spot, and it's a flat bolt. That way uh, you don't have to worry about the chain hitting that and possibly breaking your chain. So I would consider that a very important modification to the bike. Next, also equally important, is a seat swap. So stock seat, gone. I replaced it with the ProCycle standard seat. It's a fantastic seat. Uh, I've done a video on this as well. I've done 500 mile day, like 500 miles in a day on this seat. And yes, I mean, at that point you're a little uncomfortable, but it's, it's manageable and uh, fantastic seat. I had them put the warmer, pre-installed the warmer in it and I've never even used it. I do live in the desert, so there you have it. If I lived in a colder climate, that would come in handy, but at this point I haven't used it, but I do have it. <clears throat> Excuse me. Anyway, when I put the seat on the DR650, that affected things because it put me higher up in a, a sitting position and I was leaning forward. So I had to change the handlebars. So that's what has gone on for this the last few videos with this bike is once I did that, it kind of messed with everything. Just changing the seat affected everything, but that's all right because it turned out to be a good thing. So I went with a once again Pro Cycle and I did the handlebar oversize kit. This is a uh, Pro Taper 1 and 1 8 tapered bar. It's pretty fat, it's much better than the stock 7 8 bar. And also came with uh, Warp 9 inch risers. And this has made an absolute fantastic difference with the ride of the bike. I just did a test with this. I think it was a 250 mile day. Uh, not just with the bars, but with the new tank as well. And I'll get to that, <clears throat> excuse me. So new bars, one inch risers, on the DR650 seat swap upper chain roller. Now we are going also, the stock uh, DR650 does not come with the windscreen in case you're not familiar with that. This is the Madstat adjustable windscreen. So you can move this up and down. Uh, it's a very effective windscreen. I got the 20 inch. There are three different sizes. There's 18, 20, 22, and you can get these. You can, they actually have a measuring chart so you can figure out what's best for you. I'm 5'10", and I figured the 20-inch windscreen would uh, be right for me, and, and thus far it's, it's proven to be correct. It, it works just fine. So right in this area as well, uh, a very also important modification is the headlight. The stock headlight is trash. Get rid of it. I went with the, um, the uh, what is it, the uh, Cyclops. Where did I wrote it down? Uh, the Cyclops bulb, bulb sorry, uh, the 10.0 LED H4, and I went with the Ultra. So this is an extremely bright light. I highly recommend this. Let me get this turned on. Whew, yeah, that's low beam there. So they're going to see you. Let's go low, and then let's go high. You want to be seen when you're riding, of course. Now, this is a fantastic light, easy install. It has a fan on it that keeps it cool when it's riding. You can hear the, the fan going now. So I highly, highly recommend that modification to your bike. I'm not done with lights on my DR650. Um, I'm going to put some auxiliary lights, I think right here where the these reflectors are attached to the forks, but I haven't gotten to that yet. So in due time. So for as far as luggage, I went with the ProCycle luggage rack system. That's the tail rack and the panniers. Once again, very simple install with that. And I've got the Tusk Pilot uh, pannier bags, soft bags that I use with them. They're just easy to come right off. And I did get the ones with the bottle holders in the back just here. So that's where I keep uh, the spare bottles of gas. And let's see, of course, I've done multiple videos now with the Acherbus 5.3 gas tank. I did have, prior to that tank, I had the 6.6 .6 gallon tank, and I found that I did like the tank, but I just found it to be a little too much. However, I highly recommend swapping out the gas tank. The stock gas tank, I think, is 2.1 gallons, and at best, maybe if you're lucky, you can get 120 miles out of that. I never did. I, as soon as I hit 100 miles, that was it. I was searching for gas. <clears throat> the 5.3 gallon tank, easy 250 miles. That's at speeds between 65 and 75 miles per hour. And on the 6.6 .6 gallon tank, over 300 mile tank. 
So I highly recommend either of those gas tanks, but I like the 5.3. It keeps the bike still fairly lean, but you've got that much more range, peace of mind. Let's see, another very important uh, modification I've done with the bike is I went with the Pro Cycle lowered foot pegs. Man, that has made a huge difference. Um, the stock foot pegs suck. You're going to want to change out your foot pegs no matter what. And I highly, highly recommend. Like I said, I'm five foot ten, and the Pro Cycle lowered foot pegs have made a hell of a difference. As far as armor, I've got the T Rex Racing Crash Bars, and I'm very happy with these. Um, I'm going to keep these on. And I did have the T Rex uh, skid plate, and that covered a lot of this. This is a really fantastic skid plate. But the noise of the dang thing, it was just, I could not get it to stop uh, the reverberation, you know, the reverberations, the vibrations, it's just, that sound is driving me crazy. And after a year, I finally just took the dang thing off. So the DR650, well, my DR650 currently does not have a skid plate on it. I'm probably going to go with the Acherbis plastic plate, but I haven't put it on yet. Um, I'm just not going to bother with that right yet. And that's the mod so far on my bank. I've got a tank bag. Oh, the grips. Yeah. <clears throat> uh, I swapped out the grips. Uh, I had to get a Motion Pro throttle tube. You're going to have to do that because your stock grip, as I explained in the last video, the stock grip here is attached to the throttle tube. So you're just going to have to chuck that whole thing and get up start from fresh <laughs> so grips i went with the pro taper what are they pillow top light just have to reference my my notes here yeah it was the pro taper pillow top light grips that's what i went with so uh what i found out when i did the 500 mile day on by using the stock grips was that uh, they uh they would at, by 500 miles the grips here were literally cutting into my hands. It was it was almost painful. So I highly, highly recommend getting rid of your stock grips into something else. I just went with these. They're a little smaller than the pillow top. These are the pillow top light grips. And I figured once it gets cold and I'm wearing thicker gloves and everything, I'd, I'd have less fatigue with the hands. That's what I'm thinking. I also use... Um, Oh, what are they? The hippo hands that fits over and that makes a huge difference. And one, I think I've got one more thing as far as when I did the tank, I pulled out, let me get some light in there. I pulled out the stock fuel filter, which is goes into the carb right here. It's this really tiny fuel filter. It's prone to clogging. And once I had the new tank on and did the fuel line here, I put in an inline fuel filter. There's also a mesh fuel filter at the top for extra protection. And uh, I haven't uh, had any problems with that. So also stock tires off my bike. I've been riding the Tusk D Sports. I'm very happy with these tires. I have those tires on all my bikes. So um, easy 3000 mile tire. Uh, it works fine. Interstate riding, backcountry, gravel, I, just like anything in, in soft sand, you're gonna you're gonna get a little squirrely. But I've uh, I've been very impressed with the Tusk D Sports. A little hard when you get a change of flat. Sidewalls are pretty stiff, but other than that, great tire. I think my next set of tires are going to be the Moto Z, uh, the Rally or the Tractionator. I'm not sure, but I, I, what word on the street is you can get about six thousand miles out of those tires. So. A little more spendy for the tire itself, but I think uh, I think it might work. I'm gonna look into that. So I think that's all the mods I've got on the bike and uh, thus far. So if you're in the market for a DR650, I highly recommend getting one of these bikes. They are absolutely fantastic. And I'm thoroughly, thoroughly, hey pup, I thoroughly, thoroughly, thoroughly enjoy mine. Anyway. That's all my mods. I've got everything put back together. I think we're ready. So let's go for a ride real soon. Folks, as always, thank you very much for watching. I've got lots more content on the way. So if you're new to the channel, please consider subscribing. It helps tremendously. It is free. 
We'll see you next time. D-Rock out. Adios.